Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar day on business <coughs> benefits realization. Our presenter Claude Melly is sitting here and he's ready to go, but I'm just going to take you through a couple of housekeeping tips just to help the afternoon go smoothly. Um, slides that you see, as well as the entire recording of the webinar, will be available on our SlideShare page and YouTube channels, respectively. And links for these will be sent to you in our post-webinar follow-up email. Um, if you could just allow up, up to a week that to come to you, um, that would be great. At the end of the webinar, you'll see a survey that pops up. And if you could please give this a couple of minutes of your time to give us feedback on how we've done and, and what you'd like to see or even topics I'd like to have webinars on, that would be very helpful to us. As you listen to Paul speaking, you might have questions. If you look at the bottom right of your call panel, you'll see a question box, and this is where you can communicate and ask, and ask Claude questions. And right at the end of the webinar, Claude has already allocated time to answer your questions. So without any further delay, I will hand over to Claude. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you very much, Jerry. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much for dedicating some time to this webinar of a very, very important topic for all those who are dealing with achieving goals in the organization and uh, making sure that the organization is healthy and meets benefits. So you have my very short biography over here, and I'd like to share with you throughout this webinar the uh, many things that I've been able to be exposed to and also to experience. So uh, more about that as we go through. And uh, we're talking about business benefits realization. I'm sure that all of you are here and thank you very much for being present. Understand that any uh, organization, be it uh, private or public, is seeking benefits and uh, has to measure those. And they are going to be uh, positive for the business. So are we getting results is what most management, if not all management, are asking on a day, weekly, or monthly basis. I'd like to make sure that you understand the context of this particular uh, webinar, which is an excerpt from a large program that uh, Informa has put to place, which is called Managing Successful Organizational Initiatives. Sounds like a mouthful, however, it means exactly that. And we have a course on December, which uh, is going to address how to achieve organizational goals, both be them strategic or operational, through the different initiatives. And this webinar is an excerpt from that particular course. So I invite you all to uh, hurry up and uh, register for our uh, webinar, not webinar, our four-day course End of December, nice way to end the year, just before Christmas, and um, it will be Dubai. So uh, that will be what we'll be doing for continuing for this webinar. We have a small poll that I'd like us to be able to, uh, to, to uh, send to you at the very beginning. It's very much an important one where we are launching this. You should be able to see that on your uh, screen now. Um, today, uh, do you know your business benefits as they are declared for the projects which are basically the initiatives that are launched. So if you can just type in one, two, three, four, or five, and then you can see how that will give us a percentage spread. And I see already some of you are typing in, quite interesting answers we're getting here. Some people don't have even heard of them. Uh, oh, good. So uh, I see some people are familiar with them, which makes it very good. Uh, oh, I see that uh, someone has seen them and understand them, but also someone has to see them but does not understand them. That's quite intelligent. Okay, so I'll let you keep on putting here, everyone, and um, we see that there is spread. It seems that uh, it's quite uh, it illustrates the, uh, the way the business benefits are well communicated within the project. Let's move on to our, our seminar. We'll come back to this particular poll because we have uh, a percentage uh, that sort of comes up on the screen somewhere and uh, it guides me through the whole of the uh, webinar. Um, so, what are we going to be looking at is how do we relate the business case to the business benefits and how do KPIs fit into that and the big difference between KPIs for the business and KPIs for the project and we see how as far as project and program managers one can contribute to ensure the benefits are reached and we're going to be looking at what is called a benefits management chart and no benefits can be realized unless the organization is ready to exploit to use the product or service that is being produced by programs or projects and uh, how do we as one plan for that and once in operation well the organization has to realize the benefits how do you measure that so we'll see throughout the whole of the webinar where the emphasis for me will be is that managing all types of initiatives and programs and projects those who are doing this 
uh, yourselves, project managers, program managers, line managers, and also division managers. There has to be an entrepreneurial uh, vision as to we are doing this for the organization and the uh, benefits need to be realized after the long journey of converting the situation today to situation tomorrow. So let's just have a quick review. Some of you, this would be a, uh, something you've seen already. Others, I hope it will be enlightening and understand what are, what are business benefits. Okay, so there are many expressions that you find uh, by all the different authors. And I've taken one and adapted it to my uh, way of thinking is any type of improvement and outcome that can be seen in operations as advantage. But one or more stakeholders. You won't get all the stakeholders by in, uh, I'm sure you understand that. But the benefits themselves are of different types. There are some of them where not too difficult, definitely financial. Okay, so if you go launch a new product and you've worked on it, and then the product is, is saying, well, you're getting back here some financial uh, data, and that can give you some idea of how you meet the financial goals. You've got some expected financial, well, you say, well, if I do this, there's a trend on that, then I'll be able to, uh, to sell more or to be able to be much more um, uh, revenue generating out of my actions. There's a logical financial one, which means that uh, there are a lot of things that will be improved and we don't have a lot of uh, past data to extrapolate from but we expect that if our organization uh, produces better products and services if you have a much better position in the market then that will benefit a variety of products and services we may have internally or externally those are the classical ones however the ones which are difficult are the qualitative um, like how do you measure increased efficiency for your staff um, some of them are very difficult, very intangible, very intangible. It may take a, a year, or two or three, or may come over very, very quickly. So difficult to measure, but there is an aspiration to be able, shall we say, to increase the uh, image of the organization, to be able to uh, have a major impact in the community. Now, how do you measure that? Uh, and these are actions that organizations seek when they want to be able to fulfill their missions. Now, what happens to business benefits? Well, there's going to be some investments. Okay. And whatever investment is going to be made, uh, we would like to have ways of either operating in a much better way or operating a new way. Where the word operating is for both private and public enterprises doing things differently. For example, for public enterprises, uh, e-government is a classical way of how we're going to get benefits for society. Right? And uh, for private organizations, obviously, it will be what they do in their ways of uh, producing products, services, and other things. And the importance is that the benefits themselves can only be realized after the organization has introduced the necessary changes, which means we are going to be in operations. So the link between the strategic intent or the operation intent is to say, okay, what will happen after we make change happen, which is the project or the program. So a lot of individuals have to be concerned as to what are benefits and the business units must be involved in these projects. We'll see later on in our webinar things you may have heard of actually doing, maybe, which will be organizational readiness. Is the organization ready to take up whatever the product or service that is being produced in this initiative so that it can start to exploit it and therefore progressively reach the benefits that uh, one aims for, which is the whole intention of the investment. So a lot of individuals, a lot of stakeholders have to be uh, aligned to the reason for this particular uh, investment. Now, let's have a look how this works in a large big picture. Okay, so from the investment for change, whatever it is, just classical as is. Where where are we? What are the things we try to do? It's the case finding the case. This is done in many organisations, formally or informally. But eventually, you come up to determine what is. The reason for doing this change, either a minor change like a process improvement or a major change like a completely new way of doing things and maybe launching a new product or service. That aims for a situation called to be. And the gap between as is and to be is for us to be able to reach the business benefits, which can only be reached at the situation to be. Now, how do you get from A to B? Well, with a big jump. And that big jump can only be done before we define what needs to be done. We justified certain financially, but also organizationally, and we document what our major stable facts that we have, also the assumptions we have, and also the risks we want to address. Now we make the jump, which is building the solution. 
And that will be where the project life cycle is sits. And from the designing of a solution right to the launch of whatever it is that you are designing to build and construct. At that stage, one will go live. And then there's use of the solution. We exploit it, maintain it, and we evolve it. And eventually we retire it. As you can see, if you're not colorblind, on the right hand side, it is green, and that's where the business benefits will lie. So the gap of time between defining what we want from the concept or from the desire and the vision or mission on the left hand side of this slide to realizing the business benefit is a long journey. The longer the journey is, the more we open to change. In fact, we invest for change in an environment of change. Well, that should be kept in mind. So what do we do? Uh, in, in our webinar, we're concentrating on the blue area. Right? Uh, if you want to come talk about strategic planning, you can come to one of our other webinars, and we have a lot of these, and uh, they will they will come focus on this. We focus on the total picture and emphasizing the whole blue thing. Now, one of the things that we have to uh, consider, of course, is how, what is a business case. I'm not going to bore you with the details. However, on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see these are the major contents that should exist in a business case where the goals are being established, feasibilities may have been done, impact analysis and etc. will be done. And on your business case <coughs> table of contents, as you can see, a large part will be done in the financial metrics and what will be the major avenues to take now. Business case does not give you the answer, by the way. Business case asks you or defines why an answer is required, why a solution is required. So that will be very important it is reviewed. That's very important that it's validated. It's very important that the key business drivers are understood by the, the key parties. And the business goal, you see over there on the left-hand side, is a target. And this looks like a Hollywood movie where Robin Hood actually fires everything exactly in the center of that target, which for information is called the gold in archery terms. Well, you know, when you're so far away from the actual target, you may be hitting the white rings and not black, or blue, red, and the yellow. So, the target gives us a range of where we want to be. And since we're looking at business benefits, we must be talking about, when we talk about the tangible business benefits, what are the financial projections? How many assumptions are being made? What are the risks that we're addressing? And how do we calculate operational costs in one year, two years, three years' time? How do we calculate, if you're a commercial enterprise, penetration of the sale of product? And uh, what will be the uptake from the market? How do you, uh, for a uh, public enterprise, how will you measure your community satisfaction in one, three or four years? I mean, what does the government bring to the table? Many, many things, but how do you measure that? So there is a very important uh, time frame to think of. However, I always say initiative and projects fail at the beginning because we lost them incorrectly. And if we don't have that validation, the launch will give us a very, very bad landing. Overall, that business case and financials covers a big product lifestyle. So from the conceptual design, system design, the development structure, those will be the major three steps of getting us to a point where we can start now to utilize and support whatever we've done, product or service, and that should be the long period of utilization until we are ready to phase out or dispose. So just the fact that those boxes are of a similar size does not mean they take the similar time frame. However, that's the whole product life cycle. So at the concept of design on the left, within the whole organization, what would be the period of the utilization and support to be the longest, so that that is where the benefits will actually be realized. And in between, we have the conversion from desire to reality, designing and developing solution. We want to phase out and dispose as late as possible, if possible. Now, what happens in the calculation that we should understand, and that is where the difficulty lies, is if you have now having a look, how do we actually achieve these business benefits? Again, the as is to be. We are going to create, make or buy, own a solution. And then we will exploit it. So you buy something or you make it, that will cost you money. Then if we exploit it, that would also cost you money. However, hopefully, as you exploit it, you're also going to gain something. So the exploitation is in operations, and the ownership, as we'll see now, is in the developed life cycle of whatever project you've launched or initiative. 
in order to be able to get to a point where you're going to hand over what you have made or what you've purchased. So initiation, planning, execution, and closeout. And as you're going through the stages, this is just a illustration. You have a cumulative cost. So by the time you get the handover, you have a cumulative cost which tells you, okay, now I've got a thing, a product or a service, right? It's just cost me so much money and it's taking me so much time. Now I will operate. And just for simplicity's sake, I've made it as a linear cost, cumulative cost, saying that the operational costs are going to be linear from now on and they're added to the ownership costs. Someone somewhere would have developed what would be the benefits. Now remember, we have the tangible benefits, easy to measure, and intangible benefits, very difficult to measure. So we have to have a measure mechanism. So this green line, as we are in operations, we are measuring what benefits we are reading from the investment. And all of a sudden, when we get to that crossover point, and I'm sure you all know what that crossover point is, that is the break-even point, which roughly says means I spent so much money for so much time and at zero. Now that's a heartbreaking thing for any manager to hear, right? Now the whole period we have in operations, from the moment we started benefit curb to the break-even point, well, that's open to this how long will it be? A week, a month, a year, I know of organizations where the green line never reaches the red line. So <laughs> so some people may have got fired for that anyway, but they did another job somewhere else. Let's carry on. So that's the whole picture. We want the green line to be greater than the red line, cumulatively, as early as possible. That's when we actually have our return investments. So that's, that's the picture. Some of you must have seen it before. And we move on now to the next slide. Okay. So uh, how many uh, actions has the project manager had to uh, uh, perform throughout this whole uh, journey is to make sure the operation is going to be aligned to the... Uh, business benefits we're trying to reach. So we have stakeholders to understand the objectives, we have to understand the changes that have to be made in the organization, and we also have to ensure that the changes are made so that the organization is ready to uh, utilize whatever solution is going to be put forward. What about KPIs? Everybody talks about KPIs, key performance indicators. Basically, it's uh, measuring things. I measure things with KPIs. So uh, here's a small poll I would like all of you to be able to answer. What will be the difference between a business KPI and a project KPI? So the poll is coming up on your screen pretty soon. And if the, do you think the business KPI covers a total life cycle, does it cover only the operations after the project delivery? Does the project API cover only the project life cycle? And does the project API cover the total life cycle? So what is the time frame that the KPIs are Covering business, is it total, or just the uh, operation side? Project, is it just a project life cycle? Does it cover all of this life cycle itself? Right. So I see some people, okay, right, we've got some answers one, we've got a couple of threes, we've got, that's good, uh, we have a couple of fives, okay, <laughs> that's very good because it's a word that's banded around the KPI, a lot of people get themselves confused, and I see we've got, okay, so let's look at the whole project life cycle. Like, oh, okay, we've got, I think some people are looking much more, uh, the project is different, to the, well, it's quite different. All right, okay, all right, I'll give you another few seconds, thank you very much. All right, so we have a spread there. Okay, that's very nice, Sherry, I think we can uh, distribute that spread later on, and I see that a lot of people are looking at that. Thank you very much for the poll. It, it helps for the next uh, couple of presentations, and... Um, Let's clarify what I would call boundaries of KPIs because it's very misunderstood throughout many organizations. So again, as is to be, fine, you've seen this before, right? And uh, define the case, you've seen this before, building the solution, I showed you this a few slides again ago, and exploiting the solution. So you have the red, the blue, the green. Now, as far as the business KPI boundary, it will start with the concept of the idea where one would like to reach and achieve a certain business benefit up to including the moment we retire, which means we have put an end to getting back our return on investments. Right? So here you see the business KPI covers the organization right? and it is driven by stakeholders who are behind the actual change and will be delivered, I'm talking about the actual business benefits, are delivered in 
operations. Now, where does the project KPIs are, and there's always a big confusion here, uh, project KPI mean this is what I will be delivering. Now, whether or not the operation will reach the business benefit depends on the operation's ability and organization and management and other factors which can only be uh, managed under the operational side, and therefore outside the boundary of the project. Too many project managers believe that they are still being measured during operations. No, you're going to be measured what you give the operations, and the operation will be measured on what it actually delivered. So uh, we'll be talking about that. We have to clarify that, and usually it's clarified, as so, some of you do know. At the start of a project, when you have a project charter, which actually stipulates what the project KPIs are and what are the deliverables that need to be done. So it's quite important that we understand where we start and where we end at a project, and they fit within the business KPI. So the legislational business KPI can only be achieved in the operational phase, which basically means we have delivered the project and handed over. And what happens throughout the whole life of the project, project manager will be working very closely with the organization because the project contributes to the business KPI. And if there are modification, changes, evolutions of the project, that will have an impact on the organization's KPI. It's good to be able to anticipate that and discuss with the organizational managers. So getting a clear definition of what are the KPIs, ensuring that from the project management point of view, one understands the difference between the organizational KPIs and the, and the uh, project KPIs, and understanding how they are financially and non-financially capable of being met. If you are responsible for increasing the efficiency of a particular uh, organizational department, well, you put in processes, you put in education, you put in training, and then it's the organizational department that's going to be performing to a high level of competence, hopefully, but they are not performing. You know, people who are laggards, people who are not very uh, interested, then you may well have a different result. But it's not because the product is not meeting these KPIs. It's quite, quite important. And vice versa. You can deliver bad training, you can deliver bad processes for the organization, and the organization ramps up very, very slowly. Now, that is because the project KPIs have not been fully met. So, the major things to see is to have those objectives well understood within the project. These are the milestone schedules, I won't bore you with that. And that allows the major deliverables to be made available to the organization. Now, what is benefits management? Well, benefits management in the change in the projects and the initiatives is to, is a, is a multi step uh, process, very linear in its presentation. However, it does have a lot of iteration. Let's see um, what happens here. Uh, at a certain level of management, be it operational, strategic, there's some business benefits that have been identified. Uh, people are going to be behind that. There will be sponsorship uh, and different owners. Uh, there will be a benefits app that I will show you in a few moments. It's very, very key to understand how that works. Uh, there will be a project which is developed, and therefore there is a baseline which will be performed. There will be a change initiative of how we're going to utilize and exploit the, uh, the output of our project. And how are we going to uh, progressively introduce this in the organization so that the benefits can be uh, reaped and they're measured? So that's a general step by step. There are overlaps, there are some iterations, but let's say for the uh, object of this particular presentation is very linear. Now, a benefits map, which is the red part here, we see how it all relates to each other. And it's very simple to construct, by the way, now, but it will show me things that the organization needs to look at as it's building it. And we are showing a lot of links between the outcomes and the benefits and what are the actions that have to be performed to see those particular benefits and outcomes, okay? And by doing so, target dates can be established, especially if it's established in schedule for the project. And <clears throat> we can focus on how all these things interlink. I've seen many organizations where certain actions have been done by projects which were very good. However, other links to our projects have hampered the uh, realization of certain key benefits because the interfaces have been well understood. So let's see how benefits map would look like. Well, we start first of all with what are the key objectives that are the business KPIs. So that we are on the right hand side. I'll just give simple examples. They're uh, classical. I want to increase profit. I want to decrease my operational cost. I want to have satisfaction. 
and also I would like to have a reduction of project overruns. So, uh, so one places those objectives on the right, and through the development of the specification of a project and programs, we establish what will be the deliverables that the different projects and programs will produce in order to coincide with the objective. So the same colors, so the greens, the greys, purple, and the deep purple. Uh, now, this is what we need to do. A deliverable will allow the organization, first of all, to be enabled. Enabled. So let's take a very simple example. I want to increase profit by 5%, apply, and the deliverable, someone has decided that we need a better uh, CRM, a client relation management, and a better marketing program. So those are the two deliverables. They will enable the organization to have a better centralized customer database and which will allow them to penetrate new markets. All right? And if we follow all these gray boxes, these are the benefits that will enable the organization to work. So they're still not giving us the actual benefits realization, which comes from the enablers. So my sales increase in yellow can only happen because I've got a better customer database per market. And the sales increases are one which will benefit the organization by a margin increase. Now, some of the errors which go across, I just demonstrate that we are interrelating multiple projects, multiple deliverables to engage the organization to reach its multiple business benefits. So you have objectives, you have deliverables, you have enablers, and then you have the actual measurement of benefits following the enablers. So that app is not difficult to make. Once you make that, then it springs to the mind as to how the organization will be able to uh, get the best of the investments. Now, project milestone schedules, I'm sure you know what they are. In order to be able to integrate the uh, partial deliveries or the full deliveries of project deliverables, the uh, management projects has to uh, synchronize that with what I would call the operational schedule, where the organization was okay, this deliverable will be ready at such a date. I need to have my organization ready, be it my people, be it my environment, be it my structure, my processes, so I can start to benefit the circuit. I can start to utilize whatever the project is going to deliver. So there are two schedules here. The project or projects schedules with the different milestone dates and what I call the operational schedule. At which stage am I going to, as an operational manager, going to start utilizing what the projects are delivering. So the two are synchronized. And that makes such the organizational readiness that I mentioned before we review again later on is going to be compatible and in harmony. And then we will have mechanisms in operations that allow us to measure how we are performing in operations. That leads us to organizational readiness. You know, I think everybody agrees that if we prepare something for the organization and we throw it over the wall and nobody comes over to pick it up from the wall and or they don't even know how to pick it up or maybe it's a hot potato. From the project management point of view, people say, well, deliver that stuff, okay, bye. Well, that's not going to happen. I mean, it doesn't work, does it? Organization readiness say, okay, we have a wall, whatever say, let's use the size of that wall. Let's make sure that everybody knows that we're passing the ball to each other and we do not hot potatoes. So, how do we make the organization ready? So there's a lot of work that needs to perform within the project so that the, uh, the whole of the organization is in harmony. So the project team and business unit managers, you have to have a lot of uh, workshops, you have to have a lot of uh, awareness uh, discussions, you have to make sure, whoops, that's a very light read now over there, a lot of understanding. So you have this through training, of course. You have a, a lot of discussions with individuals who might be pushing back and uh, so that uh, there is acceptance in what is going to be happening to the organization. And eventually, you want to make sure that uh, the individuals and organizations are progressively committed because they want to be able to apply whatever it is, the product or the service that is going to be measured once it is in the hands. Right? So on the project planning, we scheduled this earlier on, these things are added so that there's no surprise to the organization. And the and the assessment of the organization is a continuous process, okay? And one needs to be able to have uh, within the whole project uh, schedule and conducted by the project team with the business units, uh, a variety of uh, meetings to understand how will that affect people, staff requirements, training, and so on and so forth. Even though the project manager is not responsible for 
reorganizing the operations. However, the project must understand that there may be a reorganization, there may be some stuff hiring, there may be some newcomers that need to be trained, and then the project has to interface to that. So important that correlation between the project team and business unit. And what other processes, apart from the ones that have been modified by the current project, need to be looked at? That may not be within the scope of this project. However, you cannot be blind and also work in a vacuum. So what is going on in parallel so that there is less difficulty in easing through the new product and service that this project is responsible for? And we have to look as well at other things of infrastructure, especially in IT, uh, infrastructure, also new buildings that one goes to, maybe there's a new manufacturing plant, uh, whatever it is that you, you're working on, depends on your domain of interest. So the assessment is done at the beginning of the project yeah, and continuously throughout the whole of the life of the project. And that gives us planning that is coordinated between the project team okay, and the business units. Uh, the sponsorship must be there to support that because it means crossing organizational lines quite often. It means that people need to be involved uh, throughout the whole life cycle. And uh, something that you may have heard of is concurrent engineering, is a name called used for that, to be able to ensure that all the main players are present throughout. And uh, the readiness itself it will be uh, something that has to be looked at. How does it affect people? How does it affect their jobs? How does it affect the change? Whatever it is, so that is something to be addressed with the uh, the senior managers, but they will have to address the resistance to change. But we also have to address whatever training needs to be done, you know, it's, uh, and processes, methodology. So there's a lot of stuff that is very often, I won't say misguided, but not taken with as much focus as it should be. And then one finds oneself running at the end of a project phases for you know during the testing, assembly, whatever it is, for delivery, and all these things come to the head, and it does raise stresses, and people are maybe already being stressed, will be uh, very resistant. So the earlier we start, the more opportunities there are to be able to adjust these things progressively. Okay. And we get to the point that throughout the whole project life cycle, near the uh, back end, basically, we're doing uh, some form of integration, testing, commissioning, there are many words for that. Uh, we don't want to have this, this resistance. Uh, uh, and to avoid resistance, which could either be organizational, because there are changes of structure, because there are political issues, because maybe the jobs are going to be changing. So organizational resistance, uh, to be coupled with individual resistance, people are you know, getting away from one comfort zone to the other. They're going to be doing things differently, whatever it is, even if you just do some uh, continuous movement. Okay? So in order to avoid that, now we've got to be able to anticipate there will be organizational resistance, there will be individual resistance. One could say, well, I'm a project manager, I, can't, I don't care. That's a problem of organization. Yes. However, if you do not work with the organization, we'll have even more resistance. So it's just to, uh, to be aware of that, integrate that into our thinking and also into our action plans. And then move forward. All these uh, plans are placed as early as possible in the project plan. And we review it, continuously review it. So we plan workshops, uh, we invite individuals, key users, key uh, managers, we try to understand what's going to be the changing of the environment, which may be outside the scope of our project. <coughs> Excuse me. However, no point finger pointing by saying, well, I did not know this, it's somebody else's problem. Uh, it doesn't have the organization one bit. You want to have the organization very much. So there are any workshops, discussions, uh, taking time, yes, okay. listening to the users, using, listening to all those who will be uh, uh, utilizing, exploiting, that goes beyond uh, the organization sometimes. And uh, we will be able to uh, address the classical uh, resistance model, which you may know this is from uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, a very well-known model, denial, resistance, exploration, commitment, um, so that we can break down the denial and resistance as early as possible in projects. And we get people through workshop to explore together uh, better ways of approaching things so the commitment can kick in as early as possible, not the very last moment, because we already told from the as is to a to be, which is old state to new state. And by doing so, we move to that very important uh, step where uh, we want to finish the project on the side. The organization is pushing to go live, whatever it is the go live would be. And uh, we want to make that transition. So the transition is 
Well, how do we progressively move to that point where we're going to switch from the investment we made to operating on that investment? And go live means, okay, we go live. Now we are in production mode. Now we are in exploitation mode. Now we are in operations mode. Uh, this is where the clock starts ticking in the uh, benefit realization curve that we saw earlier on in this way. So the major challenge is how we interface it between the delivery of the project, the what change management has been going on in parallel, and how business operations is going to be shifting from one state to the other, hopefully not overnight. That's called the big bang, right? <laughs> and we stake whole support. And by doing so, on the transition, we look at how we're going to have the schedule, which makes sense, how we can parallel old and new operations so there is transition, the offense ramp up. And from the go live, we want to be ready. Are people ready for it? They've been trained as processes have been in place. Have people had their existence reduced? Um, and so on and so forth. So that makes it uh, an important step. And by going live, we want to confirm that we have got a variety of things, okay? All the things that are needed to operate, because it's operations, I've been repeating many times, during operation that the benefits will be realized. So do we have everything that the organization can employ to exploit, you know, whatever flows, process improvements, all the results of the testing that we can prove. And by doing so, you know, have all staff skills been understood so that people work on all new, uh, how is the training being done? so that people can actually uh, be effective from uh, a certain position. And obviously, if you deal with all our vendors, right, as soon as we start to operate, we must make sure those products have been fully tested, integrated. Also, there are sport contracts because uh, insurance of things that may or may not go correctly to operations. And when we go live, there are many, many ways. I don't think Big Bang is a good idea. However, it does happen. Uh, there are phased and the parallel, so there's a lot of strategies you can use. And you can handhold, all right? Those would be uh, help desk staff, super users, goodness, what you want to call them. Uh, you want to have support teams in place. Uh, you want to review the schedules and help the organization uh, to go live. And you want to coordinate all schedules so they all meet at the right go live day, because it's a big day. When it's well done, you, know, you have made the local layer or the local uh, dignitary comes on and there's a big, nice big ribbon and they have a very nice golden or silver uh, parasites and they uh, cut open a ribbon. Isn't that nice, right? But once they cut the ribbon, you want thing to work. <laughs> so you can also, of course, provide some uh, parachute or some nets. So, so what would be the, 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 the disaster recovery just in case the business stops. So. And finally, this is where, you know, the, there's an English expression which says that uh, uh, the proof of the pudding is in eating. Now, you might laugh at this because this is a typical English expression. But basically, if you're going to cook yourself a pudding, you put together your, your uh, flour and your water and your sugar and goodness knows what, and you make your dough, well, I don't advise you taste it yet, then you preheat the oven, you stick in there your dough, and you wait about 25, 30 minutes, and when you take it out of the oven and it's cooled down, then you taste it. Then you taste it, and good luck to you if what you put into your dough has not been <laughs> what you wanted. So the proof of pudding is get the benefits in operations. So what have you done to actually uh, make the dough, right? And um, the benefits are right from day one. I remind this particular uh, graph that we saw, very simple graph, I remind you, please. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's the essence. Are we from that green line going to be going up that same uh, curve? Huh? Is the red line going to be <laughs> that same curve? Now we're trying to meet that crossover break-even point. So, you know, so operations now are under scrutiny because the benefit tracking is there. It's there. Huh? So as we go through, the business units are accountable for benefits and the business units are the ones which receive the benefits. And the projects and programs that precede the go live are the ones that enable the organization to reach the business benefits. So as the uh, business will progressively ramp up its operation, uh, there'll be a lot of measurements. There may be some tweaking. There may be some uh, re-evaluation. Uh, maybe some of the key uh, uh, obje initial objectives will have been evolving, or maybe the operation, it is uh, deemed that it cannot actually go where it should go. Maybe certain 
things have changed, or maybe it's very faster than expected, which will give us more opportunities to uh, add more things to get the more benefits. I remind you, the project delivers a functional solution and supports it. Whereas the business operation exploits it to deliver the business benefits. Really. And you have to work in conjunction. You can't just work apart. There's no, no throwing over, over the wall here. I mean, you can do it if you want, but it doesn't help anybody. It certainly doesn't help the organization. Now, a couple of last points on here. We have to understand how we have performed. And uh, there are two major reports that I want us to consider. Not only how we have performed now, but how we can actually make sure that our lessons learned can benefit from something. First of all, the project implementation view, EIR, is how have we done on the project? Its effectiveness. How we meet our deliverables, how are our schedule and costs, how we've related to the organization, how have we been able to measure evolution and change. That is the project up to and including go live, handover. And another report, it's still called the project evaluation review. However, it evaluates how the operation was effective as provided by the project results. All right. So here's uh, open to a lot of political debate, by the way, who's responsible for that. Eventually, it has to be done to prove that the organization has benefited from the investment made by the project. And what can we do in order to uh, extract from that things that we can repeat for the future? And what can we extract from that that we should do differently? It's our end of our webinar. Okay, so uh, I found this on the internet on the left. I'm sure you know who that guy is. And uh, so it says, in case you didn't know, oh, you're an electrician with no qualifications. That makes you a project manager. So all apologies to the electricians. <laughs> so we have finished our webinar. I'd like you to reflect upon what you've taken away. I think that on the uh, uh, basis of our, uh, of our evaluation post webinar, be very nice for all of you to be able to feedback us and one of the things. I remind you that uh, these webinars are organized by Informa, and uh, there are a lot of webinars being organized on a, on a daily and a weekly basis. I concentrate quite a lot on initiatives and management of change and projects and programs and uh, leadership issues. And what we've just seen uh, from uh, some of the things you will reflect upon is uh, going to be, as I said, addressed in our fuller course of four days, achieving organizational goals uh, 20th to the 23rd of December. So thank you very much for your attention, and we are open to questions. Oh, thank you very much, Jane. Now, Jenny, I don't know where you're from. Yes, the, um, the actual business benefits is a thing which is initially established at the uh, strategic level before a project is launched. It would be found in the business case, and that has to be fully understood by the project manager. The project manager does not develop the business benefits, but you have to understand what it is to know what you have to deliver and fulfill it. Thank you, Jess. A very nice question here. Okay. Yes, Mohammed. Yes. Yes, this is going to be part of our Achieving Organizational Goals webinar at the end of December. Yeah, we actually move on to that. To be very true. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah. Uh, if you have a program, good question. Programs are made up of multiple projects. So some of the projects are infra infrastructure. So when they are finished, there's no real benefit to the organization because they are to feed into another project and whilst other projects will be delivering partial deliverables that can be exploited by the organization. So you'll have an ongoing program and projects which are obviously subordinate to it and they deliver progressively things to the organization that can be exploited. So you've got an ongoing business realization for previously delivered projects What the program may not have been created yet. Good question. Very good question. Uh -huh. Right. Yes, okay. Oh, right. Uh, Vladimir. Oh, wow. Vladimir. That's good. We, uh, we have uh, some people from uh, many countries, I see. Um, thank you, Vladimir, for that question. Uh, yes, we do not have responsibility for operations. And I agree with you that very often project managers do seem to be uh, in, uh, involved in the results of the project after delivery, and they're being unfortunately sometimes blame for the inefficiencies of the organization. Um, this is where the difference between business KPI and project KPI has to be very clear in the project manager's mind and, in, and must be in, uh, discussed with the sponsor and uh, that will allow less 
uh, confusion. I'm not saying to give you clarity, <laughs> can give you some confusion. So yes, you, but you still have to support the organization for delivery. I mean, you don't walk away and say, I've got to go for three months to Brazil and do some surfing in the Atlantic. Something, right? So uh, let's have a look at what other questions we have here. Um, right, so um, yes, we have one more question I see. Oh, same question. That's a very interesting one, isn't it? Uh, we have the same question. Yes, we do and we can participate with the organization at the um, business case. Now, for the project manager to challenge the business case or the contents, well, I advise you that you have to be much more, um, shall I say, uh, aware of what it takes to build a uh, business case, uh, what the uh, different feasibility studies mean, the impact analysis studies mean, the uh, financials mean, so that you can challenge it. You know? uh, I think we all know the certain projects, well, many times projects, one is given a budget, given a deadline, and uh, following that, we said, go for it. So, uh, um, and very often you could see that maybe the business case has been developed with a little more of speculation than you think. And um, we can uh, have a, uh, a way of discussing very early on with the business case holders, right? Yeah, oh, yes, Sharif. Oh, is it Ahmed? Okay, yes. Um, how can we achieve organizational excellence in simple words? Uh, <laughs> just have a couple of hours? <laughs> no, we can't. Uh, uh, okay, okay, the word excellence has to be explained. Uh, for me, to achieve organizational benefits, uh, everyone has to be on the same page. Have to have uh, professionalism. We have to have maturity across the organization. Uh, and when we're dealing with benefits realization, we're dealing with management by projects, which means that uh, people have to understand that strategies are converted to initiatives, initiative to projects. So, come simple words other than let's all row in the same directions, uh, because eventually we all are going to benefit from the organization benefiting from its investments. So. Uh, however small or large the benefits are. And, but that requires focus, it requires multiple uh, organizations to work together, and strong top management that not only does the lip service, but also actually supports and engaging supports and commits to making things happen and supporting it. Uh, that's what I have found in my uh, business and my consulting business. Uh, people just do a lip service, it's nice, but you have to have people that change from uh, words to action. And then you get progressively good at it. And as you go progressively good at it, you can, if you can find what excellence is, reach whatever it is. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for that question, Sharif. Now, oh yeah, there's another one here. Uh, I think we'll, that will be the last one. I think we're coming to our one hour. Is that, is that correct, Sherry? Yeah, I think we're just coming to our last question. Thank you very much for all of your questions up to now. They've been great. I'm sorry I haven't been able to uh, answer all the questions that have been uh, uh, displayed on my screen at uh, an incredible speed. Um, one last question is, is key, it's key. The role of management, I don't know about organizational management. Right? I think it is very much with Chef Ahmed's uh, point here. It doesn't work if there are too many political battles at high level. They're going to be political exchange. Come on, guys, we are old enough to stand that. However, there's no point of trying to achieve things for the organization when people are tearing each other apart at the higher level. And then those who are there to make initiatives work and launch projects and programs are not fighting just against uncertainties or loans, they're also fighting against uh, individuals who don't agree with each other. So management must be implicated, committed, engaged. And I have done it many times in my career. When it doesn't happen, I used to go upstairs. I used to voice in a very, very polite and diplomatic way, uh, where areas are bringing and uh, one would suggest that management, with its power, uh, should in, be encouraged to do. And it has worked most of the time. Other times, I was fired. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your attendance. I remind you that uh, Informa will be putting uh, the actual slides and the recording of this webinar on the uh, website within the next seven days. You're getting a link to that. And uh, I would like to be able to invite you and uh, to achieve organizational goals at the end of December. I'm sure that if you mentioned that you've been on this webinar, you'll be able to get a better uh, discount because you say, well, I've had Claude Malley already and he told me I can get a discount. <laughs> Try it, it will work. 
Thank you very much. I'm closing off. And uh, Sherry, would you like to say a few words? Okay, no, Sherry says goodbye. And thank you very much. And Sherry, we host another webinar for you soon. So please uh, look out on the Informa website for the next webinar. Thank you very much. And have a very good evening. Wonderful weekend. See you soon. Goodbye.